Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and you know what, there's something so utterly cathartic about levelling up in video games. Whether it's the satisfying ring of all that XP filling up a bar, or the delightful feeling of being able to use new and overpowered abilities thanks to your blood, sweat and tears, if improving oneself in the real world was as fun as this, then we'd all be absolute Adonis's. However, as with everything in life, too much of a good thing can turn the whole experience sour. If you spend your entire time with a video game killing boars for hours and hours, leveling up way beyond what the bosses can handle, you'll breeze through the game without challenge and likely kill any tension the title was trying to craft in the process. Therefore, some video game developers took it upon themselves to make sure that the tryhards among us ended up just dying just as hard. And whether through level caps in certain areas, enemies that offer diminishing returns, or straight up leveling up everything alongside the player themselves, punish those looking to use their sheer heft to bully their way through. So let's put down the beef and pick up some seasoning as it's about to get salty. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that punished you for trying too hard. Number 10. Final Fantasy VIII the Final Fantasy series is no stranger to level-grinding diehards trying to suck every bit of EXP they can out of every encounter. And you know what? In some of the titles, it was an absolute necessity to farm fights over and over in order to take on some of the more ridiculous super bosses. Dark Aeons, anyone? Jesus. However, in Final Fantasy VIII, Square Enix had clearly decided that it had enough of people slaughtering their beautiful beasts over and over, and made it so that when the player leveled up, the enemies also saw a boost in their stats. This was done to try and place an importance on leveling up your Guardian Force summons over flat buffs to the actual party. The problem was is that if you hadn't taken time to master the GF system, you could easily find yourself in unwinnable situations where enemies severely outclassed you in every regard, meaning that you'd actually have to return to older areas just just to grind to get to their level. <sighs> Such a case happened to a young me where I fought against an impossible Ultima Seer just after switching discs and thus had no other save points or options for farming. Brilliant times. Number 9. The Castlevania Series the 2D Castlevania games have always been at the pinnacle of game design for me. Whether it's the beautifully crafted and wonderfully animated Symphony of the Night, or the down and dirty Rondo of Blood that could and would break you at every chance it got, it's just sheer bliss. The less said about the 3D games the better, but presented in this flatter form, the series has never felt so full. Since going down the RPG route starting with Symphony of the Night, the series devised a truly brilliant series of methods to keep players from becoming too powerful too early. The basic tactic that nearly all implemented is that if you're too high a level than enemies below you will only give you 1 XP, meaning that it's literally pointless to try and farm them in the game. However, a few titles took this concept further, such as Order of Ecclesiastes, which not only gave you a pitiful amount of EXP for picking on lower leveled enemies, but actually scales their attack power to your level. This means that taking on goons really isn't worth it, seeing as they can still mulch your health and you get almost nothing in return. Ouch. Number 8. Payday 2 Payday 2 is such a wonderful beast, isn't it? On the surface, things just look like a simple heist simulator with tons of arcade action and an utterly thumping soundtrack. However, just beneath this gaudy mask is a complex and utterly baffling narrative and a rather brilliant developer method for keeping players from making a cash grab when it comes to experience points. You see, even if you party up with a strong group of criminals online, you'll actually be deducted EXP for completing heists that are above your level, punishing players looking either for an easy ride or wanting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the hardest missions before they're ready. Now, some may cry foul on this practice as it does curb actual progression through the game, but also don't you find it kind of brilliantly ironic that the one system the gang can't seem to break is that of the developer's own making? Number 7. Dark Chronicle so if you've never played the phenomenal Dark Cloud, then you, my friend, are missing out. One part Legend of Zelda dungeon explorer and one part settlement builder, this game unfortunately never made much of a dent in terms of sales, but has gone on to be rightly revered as a one-of-a-kind classic. It seemed for the longest time that the poor sales were going to be the death of the series, but luckily we got a full sequel in 2003 called Dark Chronicle, or in some areas Dark Cloud 2. 
which again was utterly brilliant and again utterly underappreciated. It also had a brilliant method of curbing try-hard over-levelers by tying experience to the weapons and items you used rather than the party. This meant that while you could go back and farm items to improve your weapons to an extent, the really good materials only drop from creatures in the late game, meaning that any gains that you might imagine that you could eke out of the title were slapped back in line, letting you actually enjoy the game at its own pace. Number 6. Golden Sun Golden Sun, despite being one of the greatest RPGs ever made, also has a brilliantly simple solution to players who wanted to spend hours and hours trying to level up their party. It simply just takes enemies away. Or, to be more specific, in the first dungeon, if you try and murder the enemies within over and over, then the game will simply put a cap on the amount that spawn, and eventually there's nobody left to farm. It's a brilliantly simple tactic that forces players to advance through the game at a more reasonable pace, and to be honest, I'm very glad they took this route. Golden Sun is such a pleasure to play through and its long, winding pace is part of that charm. Therefore, overleveling wouldn't just ruin the gameplay, but actually go against the very tone of the title itself. Number 5. The Last Remnant for fans of The Last Remnant, the words battle rank will likely cause an involuntary response of swear words and controller throwing, as this system to prevent players from running amok was so good that it obviously has now become widely despised by the majority of the fanbase. The concept is, is that battle rank keeps track of every battle that you've ever been in and scales enemies to that rank, meaning that the more goons that you pick on now, the harder the later battles in the game are going to be. Now, the title highlights this pretty well, but who can turn down a free dose of experience, right? Well, it was that kind of brash thinking that might lead players into very sticky situations in the late game where new recruits now can't often win battles thanks to the overwhelming odds against them. This has led whole forums, guides, and tutorials to all crop up that basically tell players to avoid battling unless absolutely necessary in order to make the late game that much easier. Therefore, this strangely makes it an example of a game that punished players for trying too hard, but inadvertently forced them to try much harder not to battle enemies. Number 4. Mass Effect as the series progressed, Bioware adapted and changed the ways in which it dealt with players bringing beefed up parties to the, uh, well, other party. But one has to commend the ridiculously simple and quite hilarious solution that they implemented in the original Mass Effect. Firstly, they only allowed for a finite number of enemies to spawn, meaning that players simply just couldn't farm their way to victory. Secondly, and much more hilariously, even if you did kill every enemy and complete every side quest possible, you'd still be three whole levels shy of maxing out your characters. This meant that even the most die-hard tryhards couldn't max out their game enough to make every single encounter a breeze. Admittedly, 99% of the game is still an absolute cakewalk, but that finger wagging of Bioware going, okay, you've had enough now, really does make me giggle. Number 3. Ogre Battle Whereas some other entries on this list limit enemy spawning or provide low to no EXP on defeating foes in order to curb rampant power gamers, Ogre Battle takes a decidedly different approach. For here, the monsters to defeat are plentiful and each will reward the player with decent amount of EXP. However, there is a catch. For if you ramp up your party enough for the monsters in a given area to be weaker than you, the game's alignment system truly comes into play. If you bully and pick on weaker foes, the alignment meter will go down as this is considered an evil action. At first, you might not pay this any heed as, after all, who doesn't love a good old rotter run? Well, if you want your party to upgrade to certain classes which require good alignment, this now becomes almost impossible. And trust me, classes like the Paladin are extremely useful going forward, so you want to play by the rules of the game. It's a brilliant way of offering players a choice, but punishing those who want to prey on the weak just for a few quick levels. Number 2. Chocobo's Dungeon 2 Never have I experienced a game this cutesy be so absolutely brutal to players looking to swipe a bit of easy EXP. Now, Chocobo Dungeon 2 actually takes multiple measures to tame this type of power play by making healing items extremely hard to come by, thus naturally curbing the incentive to fight tougher bosses or stay in an area for too long. Then it adds in a horrible beast called Doom which will hunt you down if you linger in one area for too long, and acts kind of like the Reaper from the Persona series but even more deadly. And if that wasn't enough, the game also adds in everyone's favourite mechanic, weapon degradation, meaning that you actively want to avoid wasting your potentially decent weapons and items on mere cannon fodder. 
I bet you're feeling pretty de-incentivized to try and grind a few levels now, right? Well, if not, then don't worry, because here's the final nail in the coffin to that mentality. The rewards for EXP go down as you level up, and you get far greater rewards from the game's bosses and the regular story set pieces. Talk about a hard line on power gaming, right? And number one, The Lost World Jurassic Park. And now for something completely different, and rather totally unexpected. While I've detailed a ton of examples of developers curbing the experience for players so that they don't go and ruin the experience of the title itself, at no point does the Lost World tie-in video game ever imply that some major emotional damage is about to come your way as you complete the title 100%. However, in a now rather infamous cutscene, upon gathering everything there is to gather in the game, Movie star Jeff Goldblum will appear and effectively chastise the player for spending so long playing the game. He even caps off his berating rant by telling the player to go outside. Oh, cheers, Jeff. All that work put in for nothing other than a reminder of how that time could have been better spent elsewhere. <sighs> And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that punished you for trying too hard. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice as my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about video games that punished you for trying too hard. And you know what? In reality, in our real lives, we really shouldn't punish ourselves for trying. We should never be afraid to try. We should never give up on our dreams and our goals. But I have to say that it is for your emotional and physical well-being if you take your foot off the gas every once in a while and just try to relax. You are in control of your life and you get to dictate what you do in it. And while it is fully commendable to have goals and aspirations, don't put yourself in the ground trying to get there, my friends. Work hard and smart. Ask for help if you need it, because there is no shame in doing that. And remember, most importantly of all, you're not alone with all of this. All right, now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.